Welcome back. You're watching Guardians of Gaia with me, Megan Edwards, connecting people and planet as we explore clean energy in South Africa, continuing the struggle. We watched how Earth Life Africa and SAFSI stopped the nuclear deal between South Africa and Russia. Next up, we speak to Liz McDay from the Green Connection about what's happened since 2017. So Liz, the court case, it didn't really sort of stop the uh, pursuit for nuclear energy or the procurement of nuclear energy. What are the main forces of the South African government for dirty energy being nuclear, coal and gas? Well, you know, we have to look at what's coming out in the media and we see that unfortunately our energy minister seems to be tied to the previous century and unless your energy ministry is going to push itself to the forefront of an energy transition, we are going to be stuck. I see. Well, tell me, what does the Green Connection and other organizations in the environmental justice sort of uh, environment propose for South Africa's energy plan? What does a clean and uh, sort of a, a really sustainable energy system look like for us? So the first thing is we obviously need to move away from fossils and from nuclear, and we need to move towards renewables. But the way we do that has got to be to ensure that we deal with the social and economic needs of the country. So we want upscaling of renewables, but also a proper just transition. So we, we, we have to look at the losers and the winners and say nobody should be left behind. And uh, so we might be saying we want to push up the amount of wind, push up the amount of solar, increase jobs, push for manufacturing of, of industries in the renewables so that we can become the leaders throughout Africa in that kind of economy. But at the same time, we must make sure that those people that were working, for example, in the coal industry, they, they have to be given the opportunity to transfer skills, um, you know, build new uh, um, industries and be part of the future. They can't just be left uh, stranded. So that's for us very important. And those communities that have suffered due to their being in the proximity of, for example, coal fire power stations, or who have been dumped with a, with a nuclear waste site in the Norman Cape, those are the communities that should have decision-making powers over what happens in their areas. So talking about, you know, the decision-making powers, um, who do you think are the stakeholders or who do you think needs to get involved to make this happen? So what we have at the moment is a very top-down approach. And where we, what we need to shift to is a bottom-up approach. So communities that are affected, communities in uh, areas that could uh, gain from, from renewable energy, they need to be properly briefed and involved in those projects from the, from the start. And those communities that are affected by the closing of coal mines or coal power power stations, they need to be brought into those discussions. Uh, and, and it's a process of moving away from our old energy and towards our new energy. And, and that should include for everybody understanding how the price of the electricity will be better if we, and, and it won't be rising so badly if we move to this new system. I see, well, Liz, ending off, what is your message to South Africa? So the Green Connection works with empowering communities. And so our message is get to the field in your local area, get to know, ask your local authority, how are they going to get energy to you from a, from a clean energy perspective? What are they doing? And then make sure that you're involved in those discussions because that's what's gonna happen right now. Local authority is gonna start buying and building power stations. And we as the public need to be in there um, to make sure that that future legacy is a good one for South Africa and that we don't go down the wrong route. Well, Liz, thank you so much. Thanks for joining today. Liz from the Green Connection. Thank you. Thanks so much.
That was Liz McDade from the Green Connection updating us on communities organizing against dirty energy. Based in Johannesburg, Makoma Lekalakala from Earth Life Africa also spoke to us about working with communities impacted by the fossil fuel industry. Makoma, so the court case did not stop the procurement of nuclear energy. What are the dangers of pushing dirty energy rather than clean energy? So one of the things that uh, we know that that's going to happen, as same as it happened before, is that there's going to be a corruption. Um, the previous deals were laden with corruption, they were laden with um, untruthfulness, and South Africa will be plunged into more debt than it is now. But the dangers of that is that uh, we're going to have waste that we're not going, that we don't know what we're going to do about it. And currently, we have an, a, a problem before us that is the Kuwait nuclear power station, which is continuously cracking. And that would mean that um, people around um, the nuclear power station are in danger. It may not be evident now, but as time goes on, it will be evident, uh, particularly when more people are getting cancers, leukemia, and um, the water around the area. You, you see water. But you may find that you have you are going to have much more problems unlike before. Nuclear is not a transitional um, uh, energy. The whole world is moving towards a just transition uh, to a low carbon development based on the Paris Agreement. And South Africa is one of those countries that are voluntarily saying, yes, we are going to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. South Africa is one of the, those countries that are say, that, that have actually approved nationally determined contribution uh, to the Paris Agreement that, that is also labeling what sort of emission we have in our country and they put a lower mark and that lower mark does not include uh, nuclear energy. What does Earth Life Africa and others in the environmental justice movement propose for South Africa's energy plan? What does this clean energy future actually look like? South Africa knew for quite a long time that there would come a time when uh, we have to reconsider our energy choices. Coal is no longer there. Even if it's there, they, we are told that coal is there. But uh, for now, coal is the, one of the core um, contributors to the problems that we have of climate change. And uh, we need to move and moving away from coal, we can have natural resources that we've been ignoring for, a, for quite a long time. Like I'm saying, there's a solar spill that we have ignored for so much. There's wind that we've ignored for so much. So those are just basic examples of what can be done. And um, if this is being done at a household level where people's roofs are fitted with solar panels, we can actually create jobs at the same time and reduce carbon emissions at the same time and be free from the high tariffs that we get from Exxon University and including the load shedding that always South Africans are blackmailed and um, uh, held to ransom to, to agree to 84 uh, projects um, because of um, a decentralization of our energy system. Thank you so much for that. In which ways are Earth Life Africa walking, working towards this? Um, we, we work together with community-based organizations, with ordinary people, to make them aware of the dangers of us continuing or being um, embedded with, um, with coal generation of electricity and highlighting how the impacts are from the lives of the people who live in coal mining areas to, to an extent of um, what causes global warming and climate change. For an example, we have held um, uh, dialogues in different communities uh, to get to know what people's energy needs, uh, climate change uh, problems or agonies are. And from what we got, people had said that uh, they need to, we need to shift from what we see as business, business of usual, of people not having access to electricity, of people struggling even to pay the, the, the tariffs that they have. And people have been saying that uh, we need to shift. And shifting from uh, a coal-generated electricity would mean that people would be able to breathe clean air, 
would mean that people would be able to to, to be able to uh, come together and have a socially owned renewable energy project that of like putting solar panels, putting solar panels and also having biodigesters or even going to an extent of having their own um, uh, 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 projects around uh, wind farms. This is um, what um, uh, people would benefit from. But what is important is that we also need, people can do uh, much as, as much as they can, but what we need to do is also uh, find a way on how we relax uh, the policies. For an example, the grid uh, connection, if people are able to generate um, electricity, that it means they need to have, um, they would need to be able to input uh, into the grid and um, uh, get money from that because they would obviously, obviously be generated too much than what they need so that they can put into the grid and be paid for that. So this is somehow an income generation. So these are all the options and the discussions that we have with people. Some of the things that we talk about become a reality, but they can only become a reality when we pressurize the government to be able to do the right thing. Thank you so much for that. Lastly, as we end off, what is your message to South Africa? We have a solar spill. Let's use it. It's natural. All what it needs, it's a political will by those that are in, in decision making uh, or in, in positions of power to be able to ensure that that happens. Um, it, it's not for me and you for now, but let's think about the future. And we wouldn't want the future where we are unable to breathe. We don't want the future where we don't have water because water is diverted to uh, coal, uh, to electricity, guzzling um, generation um, technologies. And um, I think it's quite important that we all, all of us get involved. Uh, if we don't get involved, um, it, would be mean, it would mean that we are complex to the climate crisis that is facing us. Mokoma from Earth Life Africa, thank you so much for joining us today. We will continue bringing you the interviews from the environmental justice organizations struggling for a clean energy future on Guardians of Gaia, connecting people to planet. When we come back, we will hear from South Africans about the impacts of electricity issues in the areas they live in. Stay with us.